Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Wednesday, March 27th, 2017. Happy Hump Day, everybody. I hope everyone is having a great week so far. Um, we're halfway, just about halfway through it. Weekend is coming up. That's exciting. Um, yeah, so this is a general energy reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If anything about this reading inspires you to want to know more about your own personal situation, you can go ahead and email me. My email is in the description box below. Just email me, let me know what's going on, and I will help you develop a or choose the right reading for your situation. Okay, this is general, so they're not talking anything specific here. It's not love specific, sign specific, career specific, nothing like that. It's just whatever spirit wants to discuss with us, and thus the energies are fluid. So this could mean that at some point this could resonate with you, or maybe it doesn't. Take it as it resonates and leave what does not. Yeah, okay. Um, let's see, is there anything? If you want to check me out, um, you want to come see me at Awaken Fair in Terrytown uh, on the 28th of April, you can pre-book your appointment using the link down in the description box below. Also, if you would like to pre-book an appointment with me either at Om Shanti Bookshop, where I will be on Fridays, or at Collective NYC, where I will be on Saturdays, the links for those are, well, the link for the, the, um, Website to Om Shanti is in the description box, and if you would like to book a, a, a pre-book a reading with me at Collective, you can just email Chloe at CollectiveNYC.com. Again, the link to her email is in the description box below. Yes? All right, guys, let's get straight to it. Okay. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for Wednesday, March 27th, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. I just want to make sure I have this right. Yes. Okay. It is the 27th. Good. <laughs> okay. Maybe I should have checked that before I started praying, but you know what? It's fine. <laughs> Let's see what we've got for today, you guys. Wednesday, March 27th, 2019. We're almost in April, guys. It's crazy, and it's springtime. Happy spring. So very happy about that. Okay. I'm going to give this one more shuffle, and then we'll see what we've got for today. Wednesday, March 27th, 2019. Let us see here. Best messages, please, Spirit, for the collective for today. Best messages, please. Woo. Okay. All right. Wow, you guys. Wowie, wow. Whoa. Okay. These are some beautiful energies so far. All right, underneath the deck we have, oof, but then there's the Eight of Swords. Okay, this is actually not a bad thing. At least the way I'm seeing it right now, it's not that bad, um, especially in conjunction with all of the other energies that we have here, okay? Um, so what the Eight of Swords is talking about so far, it's just referring to any sort of mental entrapment you may have been experiencing in your life. Um, you could be in this energy right now, that's entirely possible, but uh, there is, there's an effort towards breaking free from that. And that is ele uh, relevant, or that is, um, oh goodness, what's the word I'm looking for? That is 
seen or represented here in the Ten of Wands reversed and the Four of Pentacles reversed just to begin with, okay? So let's talk about this. This might be a little bit of a longer one, but here we go. The Ten of Wands in reverse with the King of Swords. Please excuse the manicure. I have not done my nails yet. I have to actually get more black because I'm all out. Anyway, <laughs> Ten of Wands in reverse, the King of Swords. So there's definitely an energy of releasing yourself of burdens. And these burdens here, we're not necessarily talking about these. Okay. We're not necessarily talking about physical burdens as in like physical responsibilities, things that, you know, taking on responsibilities that are not yours to take in a physical sense. We could also be talking about burdens in the form of thoughts, beliefs, feelings about yourself or the situation that you're dealing with, represented by the Eight of Swords, <clears throat> okay? The King of Swords is the energy of of objectional uh, of je of je blah, 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 objective thinking. Please excuse me. We are technically still in Mercury retrograde. Yes, we actually Mercury goes direct tomorrow. We do have a shadow period to deal with, but fucking right. <laughs> anyway, the King of Swords is the energy of um, ob objective thinking. Okay, seeing things clearly, seeing things for what they are. So. Like, let's say if you've been in a mindset that has been less than ideal, that has turned out to be extremely detrimental to you because it tears you down or something, yeah? Seeing that as not a healthy way of being, not a healthy way of viewing yourself or your situation and working on changing that. Point blank, period. Now, the King of Swords is very diplomatic okay so this is not the queen of swords energy where she sh could potentially just be cutting things out willy-nilly this is a time of and this is actually evident in the rest of these cards here uh, this is a time of analyzing what it is that you want to keep what it is that you that no longer serves you and what it is that needs some development or needs some improvement and then making your cuts from there. So there's a lot of energy of discernment, looking at the past energies, looking at where you are, looking at where you've come from, what you've learned, and juxtapositioning that, we'll say, against where you want to be, and seeing the differences between where you are now and where you want to be, and making changes to bridge that gap. Okay, does that make sense? You have the Three of Cups, the Three of Wands, which is talking about um, celebration, yes, with the Three of Cups and union with the Three of Cups. But this is union of body, mind, and spirit, right? And so that is taking you further on your path, the Three of Wands. It also says that the more you invest in yourself, the Three of Wands says this, the more you invest in your, well, actually, they both say this together. The more you invest in yourself, the more payback you'll get in return, the more you will get in return, okay? And this is not to say that you should be doing anything solely just for the return, okay? There is also joy and excitement in finding a truer version of yourself and living that authentically, right? That in, its, in and of itself is quite re rewarding, okay? But either way, this body, this, this union of body, mind, and spirit, this, these pieces of yourself that have been fragmented that are being called back in willfully by your own self via this, three, this King of Swords energy is taking you further on your path, is leading you further down the path of enlightenment, says spirit. And thus, you have the four of pentacles in reverse, holding on to things that no longer serve you, well, that's no longer happening. Letting them go. That's beautiful, okay? So that's really what this eight of swords is representing, breaking yourself out of this mental cage. For good, too, because we're at a period right now where we're analyzing all of these things that have been holding us back and we're on a collective path of ascension into the 5D. So what's happening is a purging uh, uh, cycle, 
of releasing old energies and outdated energies, you could say, and lower vibrational energies that keep you stuck in the three-dimensional paradigm, okay? So let's see what this second row says here. Page of Swords. Ace of Wands in reverse. Woo, Three of Swords. And the Lovers. Okay. All right. Um, this actually is not bad. This is a little bit of a hidden aspect. Okay, so this is what's going on underneath the surface. The Page of Swords energy here with the, um, not with the Ace of Wands, but the Page of Swords energy. This is learning, okay? This is seeking. The Page of Swords is the seeker, is the scout, is the spy. So that's why you may often find um, a definition of someone's watching you with the Page of Swords, okay? But don't, that's not what we're talking about here. Well, okay, it could be. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right, it could be. I mean, I don't necessarily like to focus this on love or relationships or soulmates or anything like that because in order, honestly, in all honesty, let's be real, guys. In order to manifest the ideal soulmate, you have to be within the ideal vibratory rate to attract that individual. Therefore, you have to do some inner work to match that frequency, right? So I don't typically do love readings in that sense because, like I do, these are very much love readings, but um, they're not about a soulmate. This is about loving yourself here, okay? That's my thing, that's, that's the journey I'm on, and so that's what I'm here to help others deal with as well. One of the things I'm here to help with, but, um, but you could absolutely see this last row here as some sort of love connection. So technically, yeah, someone could be watching you. This could be a counterpart. This could be someone that may have, who someone that might be spying on you. Um, and I really don't like to give these messages, but spirit is pushing me to do so because it's true, they're saying. There are some of you out there that have actually met somebody that is very much okay, that is very much in love with you. <laughs> um, but they don't know how to move forward. Either they're heartbroken or you're heartbroken or they've done something to kind of put you on guard. They've done something to like break your heart a little bit or, or deceive you in some way or you have done so. I mean, this is a general reading, so it can go either way, right? Um, what I'm seeing here with this Ace of Wands in reverse is that someone just doesn't know how to take action. Therefore, they're scouting. Now, take the other person out of the equation. Let's take it back to you here. And so there are many of us that are in this stage right now, this stage of, <laughs> Spirit just said, perpetual healing, where we're releasing a bunch of stuff, right? We're coming into this union here. We're being objective and we're being discerning and um, diplomatic and figuring out what it needs to be cut out. Well, here we go. We have another card of union, divine union with the lovers, but this can also talk about that car that counterpart. Um, we're dealing with the heartbreak. And the reason why we don't really have the inspiration, we don't know which which way to go, we don't have, we may not have the drive just yet to really move forward on our true path, which is what the lovers will also represent in this another form of, this is like the card. This is the card of divine union, yes? And that union has to happen within first. So once you do achieve a greater sense of that union, this, this ace of wands, this inspiration, this new idea, this creativity, blah, 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 that will wake back up for you. But right now what's happening is you're dealing with heartbreak. And that heartbreak could be centuries old, lifetimes old. It could be from this lifetime, you know, where all of our paths are different. So you could actually see this page of swords energy 
as the agent for this king of swords, ultimately the energy within you that is making the final decision, making the final cut. You can see this page of swords energy as the scout that's going up and gathering up all the intel, all the information to present to the king of swords to make a decision. And what is this energy? All of the energy that has broken your heart, that is keeping you in the third dimensional paradigm. Three of Swords. Take it as it resonates, guys. And to be quite honest, <clears throat> Spirit encouraged me to give that message as some sort of encouragement to you guys, but I do want you to know that I don't, I tend not to focus on that. I would rather focus on myself, my own healing, um, and actually, it's a form of loving yourself and it, actually it just hit me just now. It's a form of loving yourself to not focus on what someone else is doing, what someone else has to, think, has to say about you, what someone else feels about you. That's their problem. That has nothing to do with you. You're better off focusing on you and loving yourself. And then once they're, once they're ready, when they get the courage, if they wanna step to you and be like, hey, I wanna love you too, well then maybe it'll work. But until, but, but, but if you are focused on someone else coming forward and saying, hey, I want to love you, you are actually putting a blockage, a barrier, a, you're putting resistance into it because you're telling the universe that, in a sense, you're telling the universe that you don't have it and so it's creating more distance where instead focus on having it yourself, give it to yourself. And then it will be, eventually, when the time is right, it will be reciprocated by someone that resonates with you, that is on a similar vibration. You guys don't have to be on the exact same vibration, but a similar vibration. Yes? I hope that makes sense. Okay. This is really great, guys. I know, I know how, I know how difficult this process is in no way am I finished with the process myself but I've definitely hit a brand new level a level that I've never really been on before and I say that because in this situation at this point in my life sorry guys you're about to hear the garbage truck go by but I've gotten to this point on my own I can say that I was here a few years ago while I was married, but that situation was influenced by my now ex-husband. Um, I allowed him to help build me up, which to be quite honest, is not the worst thing. It was actually very helpful for me in that time. But then the relationship needed to end. I moved on and went through the divorce process. It's uh, March 10th was actually the one year anniversary of the finalization of our divorce. I moved out, I moved into this apartment August 6th of 2017. It took a year after my divorce was finalized for me to drop back down to that place that I was in before I met him so that I could build myself back up to the place that I was when I left him on my own. Does that make sense? So this situation is not easy to deal with, but it is entirely possible. Okay, Spirit says the cards are ready. So we're gonna go ahead and get some clarification. There's so much on this, on this table right now that I'm just gonna start Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> I'm just going to start with the, um, the top row here, get some clarification, and then we're going to go to the bottom row. Um, but already, the Ten of Cups is at the bottom of the deck. Lessons, in learn, uh, lessons learned in love. If you've been following me recently, you've seen how my definition of the tens in this deck, Ten of Wands, Swords, Cups, and Pentacles, is somewhat learning, or I'm sorry, is somewhat... Um, 
leaning towards meaning lessons learned, a definition of the tens, because a ten is a completion, right? So, <laughs> um, I don't know if you're watching this, but Tamika, I just got your email. <laughs> so, the subject is, hey human, and I love you for it. <laughs> you crack me up, girl. Okay, anyway. Um, the tens are, a ten is a number of completion, right? Nine is an ending, ten is a completion. And so with the tens here, I've been seeing lessons learned. It really started with the ten of pentacles. Um, but then if you want to get more specific, creativity with the wands or spirituality with wands, uh, uh, responsibility with wands, love, loving yourself, loving others, self-respect with cups, swords, mental faculties, pentacles, hard physical lessons. You could see the Ten of Pentacles as the like overall lesson learned, right? Because that's where we, that's what we're here in this physical plane to do, learn. So Ten of Cups is that lesson in self-love, that ultimate fulfillment, giving yourself that ultimate fulfillment. If you don't necessarily have a family around you or people that you really can call family, being your own family, right? beautiful. I'll drink to that. <laughs> Alrighty. So clarification, please. Spirit, we're going to start with the top row here. Mm -mm -mm. I'll get it in a second. Ah, beautiful. Oh, well, would you look at that, you guys? Look at that. That Four of Pentacles has dropped out on the Four of Pentacles. <laughs> well, fancy that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see here. The Star. The Seven of Swords, if I can just find it. There it is. Okay. And then underneath the deck, ah, beautiful. Here comes the sun, y'all. Illumination. The sun has been coming out a lot. Whoa, with the king of wands underneath it. I don't know if you just saw that, but literally my hand just hit it and the sun fell out. And so we also have the king of wands here. Um, now, I don't, uh, the sun really has been coming out a lot recently in, um, in readings. I believe it's come out over the last three days in um, <clears throat> morning coffee. And then as I was doing happy hour last night, it came out quite a few times. Um, I believe it even came out during the, uh, the collective energy. But the sun is talking about illumination. Yes, the sun is the most positive and optimistic card in the deck. But the biggest message of the sun at this moment in time is about the illumination that it brings the warmth that it brings and the growth that it, um, what's the word I'm looking for? The growth that it influences, right? You have the star with the seven of pentacles, I'm sorry, the seven of swords and the four of pentacles. So here's the healing from the self-deception, maybe even the deception of others, um, this, the deception of others that could have caused you to hold on to certain belief systems that at this point no longer serve you but really you could say well i was gonna say you that never really served you but in a sense they did because it's led you to this point where you have a pretty serious lesson learned in releasing it with the ten of wands in reverse here right the king of wands is is speaking to the self-confidence and the action orientation towards being passionate again, um, being confident, strong, knowing when to strike, proud of yourself, the pride of a lion, being very proud of yourself. You're working towards this. Some of you already feel like this. And actually, for some of you, that's what's influencing you to make these changes, your own self-belief, your own pride. Yes, maybe your own ego, but ego is not a bad thing, guys. Ego is very necessary. 
to function in this world. We just have to balance it. So you could see this as balancing your ego with the King of Wands, yes, and the Sun. We have two more cards that flipped out. Oh, all right, the Five of Pentacles, but then the Six of Pentacles. You're progressing from the Five to the Six. What is the progression from the Five to the Six? Well, first of all, the Five of Pentacles is change. It's also struggle, hardship, difficulty, but it's change. The Five of Pentacles specifically is feeling left out in the cold, feeling less than, like, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, less than, um, um, lackluster, um, uh, rejected, that kind of energy. But the progression from that is to taking your focus off of the external world and what they may think of you and placing your focus on internal world and giving to yourself what others never gave to you or what others did not or refused to give to you. That's what not whatever, right? That's a pretty beautiful progression. And these two cards landed right by the Ten of Wands in reverse with the King of Swords. So the Ten of Wands the burdens that you've been carrying is definitely represented by the five of pentacles feeling lack feeling um, less than destitute uh, lack mentality um, uh, impoverished um, having financial troubles or negative thoughts and beliefs surrounding your finances feeling left out in the cold feeling rejected um, that kind of energy that is all that we're talking about here with these burdens that you no longer need to carry, that you are seeing for what they truly, you're, you're seeing them for what they truly are and you're cutting them away, okay? Now, this second row. This second row, what Spirit mentioned to me as I was starting the clarif clarification section, the second row here does symbolize your own journey. Yes, it does. But the reason why it came out upside down, all of these cards, face down, was because this is something that you're not, for some of you, this is something that's hidden from you, that you're not necessarily aware of, i.e. why Spirit was saying that, yes, this is actually potentially another person that you're connecting with, that is kind of watching you, that kind of wants to get to know you better, that kind of wants to heal your broken heart, whether they've done it to you or whether you've done it to yourself or whether it's been done to, by someone else. Um, this really could be a counterpart, another person. So i.e. it came out face down, therefore it's, what you, it's something that you're hidden, that's hidden from you, something that you don't know, okay? But then also it can translate as to what's going on underneath the surface for you. So while you may see this, you may be experiencing this up here consciously, subconsciously, this could be what's happening as well, okay? I just wanted to point that out. So let's get some clarification now, please. Spirit, the tower on the lovers, you guys. The knight of, wow, uh, holy moly. Ooh, okay. Underneath the deck, you have the two of wands. So either you or this other person are at a crossroads, very much at a crossroads. And that makes quite a lot of sense because you have the tower here. Now the tower is the influence that set everything off or set everything into motion. This is a lot of cards. Give me a second here. You have death, seven of pentacles, knight of wands, six of cups, judgment, wheel of fortune. Okay. And then you have this knight of pentacles with, oof, the ace of cups in reverse. Yeah. Okay, someone definitely wants to come forward and make some sort of offer. And they might be feeling pretty hasty about it. Um, I do believe that... Uh, holy moly. This is, really, this is really intense right now, you guys. 
So I'm looking at this bottom row here. Death, Seven of Pentacles, Knight of Wands, Six of Cups, Judgment, and the Wheel of Fortune. This storyline is saying someone has gone through a transformation or is going through a transformation. Seven of Pentacles, learning their lessons, learning how they've gotten here. And this could be you. This absolutely could be yourself. But this also could be another person that you are connecting with or that you are connected with. Yeah, that was confirmation right there. <laughs> um, sorry, garbage truck. Someone has gone through or is currently going through a transformation and learning their lessons within that transformation with the seven of pentacles, learning that they're reap, they've reap, they are reaping what they have sown. Okay. Now, because of this wisdom, this knowledge that's coming through here, someone is feeling hasty, like they want to make amends. They want to take action. This is also a spiritual awakening with the knight of wands. And I think someone is recognizing the connection between the two of you, or this is just someone from your past that may have hurt you in some sort of way, um, but now is seeing the error of their ways here with the Knight of Wands and Seven of Pentacles and wanting to move forward quite hastily. But that's also because they're hearing the call. They're going through their own ascension, judgment, wheel of fortune, and things are drastically changing around them. Their wants, desires are changing. They are, they've basically, they heard the phone ring. They picked up the phone. They're, they're answering the call. But this is their own call. This is not just, this is not specifically have to do with you. Um, you are a part of this, yes, because they recognize the connection between the two of you. But they're answering their own call with judgment, which is causing this ma massive change with the Wheel of Fortune. So advice, the Wheel of Fortune is saying, go with the flow. Don't worry about it. But this is also why I don't necessarily like to share messages like this because I don't want to get people's hopes up. I don't want to build anticipa anticipation and I'm really not trying to send false hope. But the message is clear and it's coming through here. So I'm just going to, I'm going to tell it like it is and exactly how spirit asks me to. Okay. But you've got the tower on the lovers also. So... There's a massive realization that's happening here. Now, let's go over here. Page of Swords, Ace of Cups in Reverse with the Knight of Pentacles. The Knight of Pentacles is upright. Slow and steady wins the race, okay? This is definitely an energy of either you or someone else. Most, most likely you, though, like, like the viewer I'm talking about. Slowly but surely, you are refilling your cup of love. But what this is also saying is that someone wants to come forward and give a cup of love to you, but they don't know how to do it, i.e. they're seeking, trying to understand, trying to figure out how to do it. They feel like they can't give you this love right now. They can't like, honestly, they can't like pull up on you and just say, hey, let's, let me talk to you for a minute. Like, mm, no, you had your chance already, buddy. But not to say that it's completely over. For some of you, if it is over, don't worry about it. Then this doesn't resonate with you. Um, and like, Whatever, I'm not even gonna, whatever. If you're really not willing to take this from this person, that's fine, just ignore this point. But there are others of you that are willing to accept this, they just have to come correct. And so we have the slow process of trying to figure out how to get there. Okay, Ace of Cups in reverse, Knight of Pentacles is upright. Now, you have the Empress with the Ten of Wands. And it's interesting because as the Empress was coming out, it was coming out in reverse, but Spirit said, no, turn that, that's upright, turn that upright. Um, the message here, and this was falling between the Ace of Wands in reverse and the Three of Swords upright. The message here is that there is a lesson that has been learned or is in the process of being learned surrounding abundance. And the Ten of Wands is that energy of feeling lack, or is the energy of the burdens of feeling lack. This is like um, past life energies in the forms of like vows of poverty in past lives and such and, and things like that. This could even be romantic ties to people from past lives in which you made a vow to always find each other and to always be together, but 
for whatever reason in current situations or subsequent lives after that, it may not have happened. And then you feeling burdened by, uh, uh, I'm hearing hand fasting, by you, you feeling burdened by having made this commitment and yet, yet and it not flowing, it not happening the way you agreed for it to because either one or both of you defaulted and now feeling burdened by it. Well, no, you have the abundance to have something else, okay? Wow, that was pretty specific. Ooh, that was a doozy, y'all. <laughs> Oracle guidance. I'm gonna stick with the unicorns, man. Let's see what the unicorns have for us today. Wednesday, March 27th, 2019. All right, best messages please spirit and unicorns. Advice for the day, just one more. We're gonna take two. I'm gonna take one more, just one. There we go, oh yes. So you have hope, stay positive. The worst is behind you. Look up to the light, y'all. That's gorgeous. And, ooh, goddess, honor your divine feminine energy. See your inner beauty. Love every part of you. Now, again, this fell face down. So this is an energy to me of either something that is underneath the surface that needs to happen, or the biggest thing is that this is the energy of this other person. They see the goddess within you. They see how they have hurt you. They see how they have done wrong here. And even if you don't want them back, they're still learning the lessons from it, okay? Even if you're not even willing to entertain them back in your life. And there's probably a good reason for that. Maybe you just straight up can't trust them. Like it's to a point where you don't think you would ever be able to trust them in this lifetime again just because of some of the things that have happened. If it's that serious, then please follow your intuition. But there is a message here for some of you, regardless whether or not you want them back. Someone sees the goddess within you, recognizes it, and honors it. But this is also because you are recognizing the goddess within yourself and are taking action to honor that part of yourself here, okay? That's beautiful, you guys. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Okay, we're gonna get our closing message here from the Crystal Mandala deck. Closing message, please, Spirit, for today, Wednesday, March 27th, 2019. Aha, there she is. Ooh, oh, there are two today. Oh, boy. Look at y'all. Oof, card number 41, Goddess Ishtar and Astrophilite, Daring Rebirth. And then we have another, there are a lot of face down. Okay, all right, look. <laughs> look, guys, okay, check it out. This other person's energy is really coming through today. Because look at that. You have your card here, Daring Rebirth, and they've got their card there face down. So again, this is something that you don't know. We're gonna stick to your card first. And you've got Daring Rebirth. I mean, that couldn't be any more perfect, y'all. Card number 41. And that is a card of five. That is a, a card that boils down to a five. Change, but 
with change comes difficulty. I mean, think about it. Going into labor, birthing something, that's painful. Like, shit, man. <laughs> but that's a big change, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> we bring you the empowerment of daring rebirth. The bold spirit in you claims the divine defiance of the phoenix. It refuses defeat at every turn. No matter who or what may seek to overpower your spirit, your peace, your loving heart, and your wild optimism, you shall triumph in a divine and daring rebirth. Do not limit yourself with expectations, whether from another or your own mind. There is so much possible for you, a radically different and new you to become. Believe, and so shall it be. I mean, damn. Okay, that's good. I mean, we got the message there. Now, we're going to go into this other card here. Keep in mind, guys, this is a general reading, okay? So even if you don't know who this other person is, that's fine. You can look at these messages that have been coming down, face, coming up face out, face down, coming out face down, excuse me, as something that's happening on the subconscious level of yourself, okay? Even if you don't want to think about it being somebody else, look at it as, try and see if it fits as something that could potentially be going on in the subconscious realms, okay? <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got. Wow, card number 17, Angel Bath Coal and Aquamarine, aqua Authentic Voice. Hmm. That definitely is something that's going on on the, surf, on the uh, subconscious, isn't it? I sure do think it does. And to be quite honest, uh, number 17 has been following me around a lot. Like I've been seeing a lot of 717s lately and just the number 17. I think I saw a 717 like twice during this reading. Okay. Anyway, authentic voice. We bring you the gift of authentic voice. We want you to know your own truths and to speak them in your own way because you have something of value to share your inner world, your unique viewpoint, and the person that you are. This is definitely something uh, Spirit is asking me to point this out. This is a message for the person. This is definitely a message for the person or the people that are waiting in the wings, that are watching someone, hoping and praying that they'll be able to l let you in their lives. Like for, for, for reals, for serials this time. <laughs> for serials, for serious this time. This is a message for you. Okay, Spirit was asking me to say that specifically, so I'm going to start over. Authentic voice. We bring you the gift of authentic voice. We want you to know your own truths and to speak them in your own way because you have something of value to share. Your inner world, your unique viewpoint, and the person that you are. When you speak from your authentic voice, you help others relax, come out of their heads and into their hearts, and remember the truth of who they are as well. Your authentic voice doesn't have to sound like the voice of another. It doesn't need to always be soft, although in its own way, it will always be loving. Your authentic voice has a place in this world and has been designed to be a valuable part of the sacred choir of soul voices, which creates music for the universe. As you trust in your authentic voice, your ability to manifest your divine destiny will grow and your responsible use of the power of your voice will help many Whew. what a reading right <laughs> well there it is guys i hope that was helpful for you thank you so much for tuning in uh, i hope you guys have a great wednesday please keep an eye out i will be re uh, releasing a recording and releasing the april readings for the rest of the zodiac signs throughout the week okay um, I do plan on having Cancer, Leo, and Virgo out by this evening. But anyway, I love you guys so much. Have a great day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.